Hi everyone, so I just wanted to give you a real quick update. I know we've been updating you throughout the afternoon on some of the weather challenges we face as this storm rolls through. We've had um, closures on I-80 and also a lot of traffic delays moving up through the Sierra. Now we have a tornado warning for Tehama County uh, right around Vina and just about 11 miles from Corning. So I did want to show you the radar, show you the location, what we're looking at at this point. Most of the Sacramento Valley south of that area is basically out of the storm, but I did want to uh, show you what's happening here and some of the areas that are getting more hard hit. So here's a look at the radar right now where you can see as I zoom in just a little bit. Hold on, let me get my radar control back. Um, just doing a couple of things as I take a look at this. So here's Chico. You can see it's just to the north of Chico here, um, just off to the east of Corning, roughly about 11 miles or so from Corning. There's the thunderstorm that's been causing some of the action so far today. And if I put a little query on that, what are we looking at? Um, let me actually put this on air so you can see this continues until 3.15, again, for Tehama County. It is moving to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. There's not much in its path. So as far as any schools, any businesses, there's not much in that region. But again, we are looking at that line of storms pushing off to the north and east, and it has the potential of tornadic activity and some rotation there. That was indicated by radar. So that's what we're looking at right here. Again, this tornado warning in effect until 315. With the, the potential, what you'll find is possibly some flying debris and uh, some roof tiles damage, some windows as well, and even to some vehicles. So you wanna take cover for the next, oh, now about 20 minutes or so until everything is quieted down. I'm gonna remove this image just for a moment here so you can see underneath the radar what we're talking about here. So it does have some nice, nice curvature sh to it showing that uh, we do have a little bit of potential rotation. Let me put this into motion and see if we can get this, let's see, last 30 minutes or so. Let's just take a look at how that storm has continued to develop. We had some lightning strikes in there as well, and I can show you that. So there's the lightning associated with the storm as it was developing, moving out of the central Sacramento Valley and pushing off to the northeast. So this is what it looks like right now. And just to remove some of the clutter so it's easier to see, you can see how that storm looks at the present time. Hail possible as well, embedded within what appears to be a very isolated cell here, but you can see that there is some depth to that as well. I'll go ahead and put a 3D volumetric slice on this just to see some of the heights that we're looking at with this storm. And as I move this, here we go. I just gotta turn it just a little bit more. Uh, that's not really showing too much right now, but I have a feeling it's because of when we deal with elevation, it's really difficult to show. Um, so let's go ahead and just loop that. Oh, we'll turn it back to now. Uh, going ahead and just returning to our standard mode, you can see the cell itself that uh, caused the National Weather Service to issue that tornado warning. Here's the area just off to the east of Highway 99. Not quite to Highway 32 yet, but it is moving in that direction as we take a larger look. It's well off to the east of Corning, so there's not a lot of towns in there. I know there's quite a few people that live up into these foothill locations, and it is getting some nice lift there with the potential for rotation because, again, you can see the curve in this little storm there. Um, let me go back to our standard view. I'm just doing this all live as we're talking. So there we go. So there's there's our tornado warning right there, just a slightly more expanded view. So you can see in relationship to Oroville, Willows, Chico, well to the north of Chico, and it's moving away from Chico right now. So this is moving off to the north and east. And if I just go ahead and show you some of the storm locations, and I'm actually, I'm gonna remove this just for a second here because it is much, much easier for you to see the actual movement in a location if it's not all cluttered with 
a bunch of different elements. So if we do northeast at 30 miles per hour, which is pretty fast actually, <laughs> um, you'll see there's very few places that are in the path and some of these are just little um, markers and roads to be honest with you. Not every place is gonna be a town that pops up on this. Uh, this will continue for roughly about the next six, uh, 15, 16 minutes, actually technically 18 minutes, um, until 3.15. This was Doppler indicated with the potential for rotation. So that's what we're going to be watching right now is just what happens with this um, if we indeed see any funnel clouds or an actual touchdown of a tornado. Let me get rid of this right now so you can see the area again under this tornado warning. What's interesting is that even now you can see right over here just off to the east of that storm how it's starting to kind of pull out of that warning area and we'll see some of the more active weather just off to the east of this actual warning area right here. Uh, if I remove that just once more I do want to take a look at some of the hail and see if we're getting any there we go. So there's our lightning. Uh, this is a report of hail uh, right there. Uh, let's see what kind of hail, if we're getting any reports here of hail. Doesn't look like it right now. Um, let me see. Sometimes our query will indicate what type of hail we've seen, uh, but I'm not getting anything right now. But I will return to our warning. Uh, let me take off the storm track so you can see where... Okay, so it looks like now we've got... We may have two, so let me go ahead and just take a look at... Yeah, that's still continuing until 3.15. Just wanted to make sure they weren't extending it and moving it in location, but um, and that continues. Uh, roughly around 2.40 is when the National Weather Service was indicating um, that the thunderstorm was capable of producing the tornado and that's why they issued this tornado warning at that point continuing until 315. You can see just up the hill we are looking at areas of snow so this has continued to kind of pull out of the warning area. The main thing with this is we're not expecting uh, huge tornadoes or, or anything but the, even the small tornadoes can rip off roof tiles and also produce some pretty intense hail at times. Um, the roof tiles and flying debris can cause damage to windows, vehicles, um, anybody caught in this path can be hit by flying debris. So it's always safe, take cover, no matter the strength of the tornado, you can always um, get hit by that flying debris and it's always a dangerous situation. Uh, the best place to take cover, uh, we don't have to deal with tornadoes a whole lot out here on the west coast, but since we're talking about it right now, is going to be on your lowest floor of a sturdy building, you want to avoid windows. Uh, if you're outside, uh, try to get inside or get into a vehicle, something that will provide substantial shelter. So even a shed, something to protect you from flying debris is the best place to be. I know a lot of us don't have basements here. Obviously that's the, gonna be the lowest point, but uh, you just wanna make sure you're at the lowest point to protect yourself from the flying debris. So it looks like this may have been canceled now. You can see that this is starting to fall apart, which is good news. Um, if I put this into motion, even within about the last 15 minutes, this is showing significant change in how it looked even, let's say, 15 minutes ago, you can see how it was kind of coming together here with right about there is when we started to see some of that rotation forming within that thunderstorm. Since it's now starting to hit some of that elevation, it uh, tends to weaken some of the rotation and capability of having just that layer to be able to force that rotation. So it is starting to fall apart as it's moving off to the north and east. So this will be expired early. Uh, just about three o'clock is when the National Weather Service said, okay, this is looking like it's not gonna have the severe potential that we thought it was earlier. So we'll continue to monitor this. I'll just give you a, a wider view again to show you the rest of the valley, how things are looking. Um, those are gonna be kind of the hot spots right there. You can see it's pretty clear in, in other places, some light rain, but nothing like some of the severe cells that we've been tracking up to the north 
part of the valley of the Sacramento Valley and Central Part as well. We'll continue to follow this and hope to see you on ABC 10 at 5, 6, 630, and of course the LNT at 11.